The Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, has ordered its standby force to restore constitutional order in Niger Republic, where coup leaders are currently holding President Mohamed Bazoum hostage. ECOWAS said all efforts made to dialogue with the Nigerian military junta have been defiantly rejected by the coup leaders. The regional bloc has since called on the African Union, the partner countries and institutions to support this resolution. But what does this new resolution mean for Niger and even West Africa as a whole? Before we delve into the conversation, let me first bring you a background of the situation in this intro package. Take a listen. The deadline set by ECOWAS for the Nigerian military to cede control back to its civilian government has since lapsed and now the regional body, after Thursday's second extraordinary meeting, has taken the decision to stand by military force against the junta. In response, Niger's junta has threatened to kill ousted President Mohamed Bazoum if neighboring countries attempt any military intervention to reinstate him. Bazoum, still kept hostage by the junta, has also called on the international community to save him from his current predicament. The threat to depose president raises the stakes both for ECOWAS and for the junta, which has shown its willingness to escalate its actions since it seized power on July 26. Reactions have trailed these decisions and some analysts are of the opinion that ECOWAS' order of military standby is just a show of power and authority, but they won't attack Niger just yet. This, however, is backed up by a statement released by Umar Ture, the president of the ECOWAS Commission on Thursday, following the meeting by the West African leaders in Abuja, revealing its doors are still open to negotiations with the Nigerian junta and will explore all avenues to ensure peace is restored to Niger. The Nigerian military has so far rejected all entreaties and has refused to negotiate with ECOWAS with hope of reaching an amicable solution. ECOWAS, comprising 15 member states, arguably has the most politically unstable countries in Africa, with the Niger coup, the fourth on the continent. Now, joining me on Secure the Continent tonight for this all-important discussion on the situation in Niger is Fahiraman Rodriguez Kone. Sahel Project Manager, Institute for Security Studies, it joins us from the Malian capital, Bamako. I also have Dr. Adam Bona, a security analyst, joining us from the Guinean capital, Accra. A warm welcome to you, gentlemen, and thanks for joining me tonight on Secure the Continent. Thank you for, thanks. for having me. I'd like to start with uh, you, Fahiraman, in Bamako. Uh, given the complexity of the situation in Niger, how do you assess the feasibility and potential outcomes of ECOWAS yesterday activating the standby force to restore constitutional order immediately? Have we gone past the Rubicon? Do you think this is not a threat and will it be carried out? Yeah, thank you uh, for inviting me to join to the discussion. Uh, I would say that there is no doubt that ECOWAS uh, have the military capacity to intervene. Uh, this has already been done in the past. Uh, just remember the Gambia case and uh, uh, before that there was Cote d'Ivoire and then uh, um, in the 90s uh, we remember about the intervention of ECOMAG in uh, Liberia and Sierra Leone. So the, the 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 regional body have the the, capa, the military capacity to uh, to intervene. But the big question at this uh, moment, uh, the question of feasibility is linked to the political context and more the geostrategic uh, context, which is really different to, to his previous intervention. Um, so uh, the risk associated to this intervention. I think is most of the main problem uh, um, which could harm, uh, um, I can say, the efficacy of uh, of this uh, um, intervention. So uh, before uh, um, taking the decision or any option, I think uh, it is important that 
uh, the 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 ECOWAS should ask is himself uh, about what are the outcome of the intervention. What are the big the the main aim we are looking forward? I think the main issue is here we want a, a stable Niger, a governable and uh, a, a Niger. Uh, and uh, also a regional cooperation, which is really effective against uh, our main enemy, which is uh, the terrorist threats in the region. So regarding this objective, it's really important to, to assess the, uh, the feasibility of the military option. Thank you very much, uh, Fireman. Man. I'd like to bring in uh, Dr. Adam Bona from Accra in Ghana. Now, Dr. Bona, some have accused ECOWAS of inconsistency and uh, a level of hypocrisy. They say, you know, the situation in Chad is not different from a monarchy because when the late president passed, he wasn't his son that was supposed to uh, take over because Chad is not a monarchy, but Echo has overlooked that. There's also the coup that happened in Guinea, in Burkina Faso, and also in Mali. And uh, Echo was did not threaten uh, military intervention. That why is the situation in Niger different? Uh, some have even gone as far as suggesting that you know, uh, Echo was is only just carrying out the wills, uh, the, the will of France and the United States. What's your take on all of this events in the last uh, 48 hours that we're witnessing? Thank you very much, and thank you for having me. Well, just like you said, and, uh, just like you said, this, this looks more of a proxy war. We seem to be fighting a proxy war for most especially France. France has been very domineering in Francophone West Africa. And because of that, if you look at Francophone West Africa, usually in disarray. And so as far as I'm concerned, this, this level of uh, this uh, round of uh, agitations and coups we are seeing in Francophone West Africa speaks directly to the, our brothers and sisters in Francophone West Africa fighting all over again for uh, their independence, even though I don't support coup by any stretch of imagination. I don't support coups, but mine is that if you, in fact, I shared a video with one of your, I think your producer, Aisha, who called me, uh, where you have some uh, military officers in Cote d'Ivoire or in Ivory Coast, literally just checking vehicles and stopping civilians in Ivory Coast from having free movement in Ivory Coast. Can you imagine if this can happen, if, if this, is, this happens in Accra or happen in Abuja or happens in Lagos? I don't think Anglophone West Africa, we would accept any level of intimidation by our former colonial master uh, was the name Britain, but that is what we seem to be seeing. And so, to now answer you directly, our leaders, West African leaders, I must say that I am highly disappointed. And let me also say, before the security, the the CDA, the Chief of Defence Staff of uh, the sub region, met last Thursday. Uh, the Tuesday, uh, was it last Tuesday or so? Uh, I was with the chief of defense staff of Ghana before uh, he left for Abuja to have, uh, you know, the CDS meeting in Abuja uh, with regards to this Niger, uh, you know, declaration of war by, I call it a Tinubu de declaration of war in the sub-region. I had a long conversation with him and I expressed my concerns and for that matter, the concerns of Ghanaians to him that we Ghanaians don't support any invasion of our, you know, neighbor, you know, Niger. We don't support any invasion because, first of all, one, our West African leaders watched on for Alassane Ouattara to change the constitution to go for a third term. You, we know how Adama Baro came into office. Mm. A certain Yaya Jame, we all assisted for Yaya Jame to leave, for Adam Abaro to come. 
what are we seeing in uh, Adam Abaro's country today, in Gambia? What are we seeing? Look at what is happening in Senegal. Okay, mine is that look at what is happening in neighboring Togo and the rest. The West African leaders, have they not seen it? Have they not seen what is going on? Can they call their colleagues to order? Can you imagine if the President uh, Buhari, who just left office, decided to change the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to go for a third term? Do you think that Nigerians would agree? But it is also because Nigeria is wholly independent. They won't, but you see, France seems to be dominating in Francophone West Africa. And largely, it's become difficult for the citizens to usually fight their leaders. And now the suspicion is that our leaders are playing into uh, the hands of uh, France and the United States and some other European countries, which some of us feel it is not the best because at the end of the day, if you come to the streets of Accra and major cities in Ghana, you would have, have a lot of Nigerians, okay? Young, old, and frail Nigerians who are begging for arms in Ghana. And that is Niger without an invasion of Equus. So you can just imagine the if there is an invasion today, they would flood Nigeria, flood Ghana, and flood everywhere. And so mine is that diplomacy should be what they should be using instead of threatening to go to war. And let me share, again, anybody who understands the dynamics of war, the dynamics of war, if you look at it, West Africa might have what seems to be on paper, the, the, the wherewithal, the power to go in there. But it's only on paper. Yesterday or so, obviously, and, you know, uh, we had the uh, Cote d'Ivoire pledging 1,000 men for the invasion. Why? Because we, the obvious answer, we all know how uh, so Alassane Ouattara in is still in office. So he would promise. But mine is that we will need a force of 18,000 if we have to invade the, the size of uh, Niger. Because you have about five to 6,000, uh, you know, strong force that make up the Nigerian force. And in, to go in there, you need at least three times the force of their army to be able to do a successful uh, you know, invasion. And so mine is that the dynamic doesn't work well for us and the timing is so bad. And so as far as I'm concerned, our leaders should tread cautiously okay. and use diplomacy instead of trying to use force. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bona. Now, back to you, fireman. Uh, leaders should tread carefully instead of trying to use force. That was Dr. Bona's uh, last sentence, and I'd like to uh, pick up from there. Nigeria's president, who also doubles as the ECOWAS chairman, President Paul Ahmed Tinubu, has emphasized that the use of force as a last resort could... Uh, is emphasized that the use of force is only coming as a last resort. Could you elaborate on the challenges and considerations uh, surrounding such a decision within the ECOWAS framework? And also, uh, let's recall that there's been uh, different rounds of sanctions on uh, Niger Republic. Uh, the, the Nigerian authorities have closed their border to Niger. They've been kicked out of uh, ECOWAS. Uh, there's also financial sanctions that have hit uh, the junta. I want to read a statement uh, from the EU Special Envoy, Emmanuel Del Rey. She says, sanctions against Niger are starting to work. There is not enough medicine, food and electricity is missing even more than uh, before. So what do you make of that statement and what's your take uh, on sanctions and uh, going to war as a last resort, do you think uh, that ECOWAS has exhausted all diplomatic means to, you know, activate, uh, to follow in his decision to activate this intervention force? I think ECOWAS is in a situation that is uh, is a way of ruling or managing crisis in the region um, is already, I can say, updates. Update uh, when you're looking how the context are uh, really profoundly changed. 
and the the the, the ECOWAS should then uh, try to to find new solution that they're still on the normative approach of uh, uh, of the, its framework saying that uh, there should be a rupture of the uh, uh, the democratic principle, but at the same time, as my uh, the the the, the, the last uh, interlocutor mm -hmm. have, have said, uh, the, the, the 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 profound question is about the respect of the principle for everybody. When there is no uh, anticipative and or preventive approach to prevent uh, what could be the gems of the coup. Uh, and now it is very difficult to interview like a firework, mm -hmm. uh, like, like uh, um, I don't know the name in English, but in French we say pompier, uh, 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 to, 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 to try to stop the fire. Uh, it's not appropriate yes. at this time. Yes, it's not appropriate at this time. Uh, so the, the, the big problem is that using economic sanction are not only eating the leaders, the military leaders, but at the first time, the population. Uh, there is a humanitarian issue. Here I'm living in Bamako, and uh, we have seen what was the outcome of the economic sanction, which uh, uh, eats the population, which was really bad for the population. So yes, of course, they want to put pressure on the uh, uh, coup leaders, but at the same time, this could give back to the, to the contrary outcome, uh, because it will lay the ground for a popular support and uh, raise the, the, the nationalism and narrative that the leaders uh, uh, are using. Uh, using also the military uh, uh, action, uh, even if they said that it's a, at last, uh, uh, last step, uh, implies too many risks. Too many risks, as I said, uh, risks on humanitarian size, because when you see how uh, the military leaders are trying to uh, protect the, the, uh, the power by uh, mobilizing popular support. Uh, this will be really risky to engage and it could have damage on ECOWAS Eco, uh, Eco image. And uh, the risk of just uh, strategic ones, you, you, you see uh, Burkina Faso and Mali trying to, uh, to give their solidarity to, uh, to Niger. It's, it, it, we are looking, we are seeing that there is no political consensus under uh, uh, this situation. But I want to, to come back to, the, to my predecessor uh, uh, arguing that uh, there is a strength link between what the coup, are, uh, the coup we are witnesses in Francophone countries and with the colonial uh, master. It, uh, this is a very important point. Uh, yes, of course, but we mustn't all have the explanation around this link. I think the profound issue is going beyond francophone of anglophone. It's a matter of uh, uh, um, a matter of, of state. It's a matter of governance. Uh, uh, there is no indication that a country like Liberia or Sierra Leone, if those countries were in the Sahelian region, won't be affected by those coups, mm -hmm. because the security uh, threat have clearly shown. Uh, the failure of governance, poor governance, poor economic uh, uh, governance. I think this is the main problem, the main issue. Uh, the, the, the Anglophone coup, the Anglophone countries, as always witnessed in the past, uh, many coups, there have been many coups in Ghana, in Nigeria, a uh, war, civil war in uh, Liberia and Sierra Leone. So those are factors linked to the poor governance. Yes, of course, the institution, and uh, 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 the one, one key element where I'm, I, I can say I share his view uh, is that in most of the Anglophone country, you have a, a, a fine divide, division between the pre presidential power, the parliamentary, and the, the justice. But in Francophone countries, most we have heritage to our heritage from uh, 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 um, France. Uh, presidentialism. Uh, yes, uh, uh, state. That that is, I think, the main problem and the, the structure of governance. So we have to work on the governance issue, which could be, I can say, barrier for this security and also political instability.
Thank you very much, Fireman. Now, Dr. Bona, uh, let's look at the people uh, here. It's said that democracy is a government of the people, by the people, for the people. Uh, but when, uh, prime, uh, when President Bazoum was ousted, a lot of uh, Nigerians trooped out in celebrations. It was actually a rally not too long ago in a stadium in Naomi that was packed to the rafters. Uh, popular opinion seems to be in favor of the junta. Uh, so, do, does, do you think the leaders of ECOWAS have considered this? I mean, what do the people want? Not uh, those of us sitting in the ECOWAS secretariat or heads of governments of ECOWAS uh, believe that, you know, this democracy is the best thing for you and you're going to get it. And uh, what, sort of, uh, what, what, what sort of obstacles will they face, you know, sending a military force to enforce uh, democracy, is it worth the lives that will be lost uh, even if uh, they seem to be very popular uh, with the ordinary people of Niger, which should be uh, taken into account because they're the, it's their country at the end of the day? Well, the truth is that uh, they will need the people of Niger to support whatever intervention force they are sending in. Or else, what happened to Afghanistan uh, when the US military moved in there? Uh, you can talk about Libya, you can talk about Iraq. Uh, it's going to be a repetition of the sort. You cannot have, uh, you can't go and chase out the junta leaders and, you know, stay in Niger for forever. It's not simply not possible. It means that, just like my colleague from Mali asked, so if you go in and you chase the junta leaders out, what is next? Mm. Because then the people are not in support of, uh, you know, the ousted, uh, you know, leader who you are going to reinstate. So what is next? Is a question I think the ECOWAS leaders should be asking. And I think you asked the question you spoke about, what's the name? Uh, sanctions. Do yes. sanctions work? Uh, that usually brings out the, you know, the, the patriotism in, in people because then the Nigerians are beginning to be defiant uh, just as maybe any other uh, popular support uprising. I, I, I was, I mean, 79 coup in Ghana was very popular. And so you had a lot of people coming on the streets. I was a young boy by then coming on the streets and asking for more blood to flow in Ghana. And so mine is that uh, our leaders will have to ask themselves, these sanctions, are they, is it working? Uh, and has it worked? How are they going to implement it? How are they going to make sure that if they are going to chase the junta leaders out, they are going to uh, get the support of the people, which for now, I think that it, it's gone because now, uh, the leaders, uh, you know, through the chairman of ECOWAS, President Tinubu, uh, is now advocating, saying that uh, invasion is the last option. Yeah. But if you notice, when the coup happened, it was first on the table. And that is what probably uh, damaged all other uh, diplomatic channels in trying to resolve this issue. Because then, if they hadn't brought up the issue of invasion, uh, probably they would have they would have been a way out. And remember, we have Burkina Faso and we have Mali, and even the, uh, Algeria is not in support of this particular invasion. And if you look at the aircraft tracker, if you track the airlines that are mm -hmm. coming to uh, you know uh, Niger, there are aircraft that are flying from Istanbul in Turkey into. Uh, Niger, do we know what it is bringing? So when you come up with sanctions, what happens is that the leaders who usually undertake these coups and, you know, oust their leaders, they, they, they don't usually suffer the most. And, and they don't suffer the most. They, uh, they usually get their food rations and they live comfortable. It is the ordinary persons who suffer. Exactly. And the more the people suffer, the more they are going to, you are going to be unpopular. You know, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, we've already, it. Dr. Bodo, we've already seen protests in the streets of Nami, and uh, they seem to have identified uh, Nigeria's president, Bola Tinubu, as uh, 
uh, as one of their prime targets. We've seen effigies burned and, you know, they were very vocal in the opposition against uh, Nigeria's president. Yes, which is, which, is, which is not very good because Nigeria borders uh, Niger. And remember, there is a gas pipeline that is going from Nigeria through Niger to Europe. And so the moment, and, and Nigeria seemed to have done the unthinkable. You have an agreement with Niger to supply them electricity. You and you cut off the electricity because of sanctions. Remembering, forgetting that it is the ordinary people who would enjoy from the electricity Nigeria supplies to, uh, you know, Niamey or to Niger. Because the leaders there would have other sources of uh, power in their homes. It is the ordinary people who would suffer. And so I think that uh, I am disappointed in the, the President Tinibu as the ECOWAS chairman, because I was thinking that he would have been a bit sober, uh, looking at, you know, excuse me to say his age, and trying to bring his colleague ECOWAS leaders together and telling them that, you know what, uh, it is the ordinary persons who suffer. And as we speak, we haven't been able to deal with issues in our own backyard. Recently, two days ago, there were some killings of innocent people in Nigeria. If you come to Ghana, two days ago, there were some killings in Boko, in the northern part of this country, where there's a protracted conflict. If you go to Burkina, about 70, 80 percent of Burkina Faso, according to ECOWAS itself and the AU and research, is, is in the hands of rebels in uh, Burkina Faso. My point is that where are the ECOWAS forces when Boko Haram mm -hmm. is threatening to take over Nigeria? Where are the ECOWAS forces when Islamic Maghreb in Burkina Faso, in Mali, in, in, you know, in the other neighboring Sahel countries are threatening to take over the entire West Africa? And so mine is that they shouldn't go and start a war which they cannot fight, they can't finish. We, we know the almighty USA had to run away from, from Afghanistan with their tails in between their, you know, their legs. They had to go, run quickly out of, you know, Afghanistan. And, and history tells us that you've got to be very careful when you are sending in troops. And so the plea and, and the caution is that our leaders should tread cautiously because this is almost like Nigeria attacking Ghana or Ghana attacking Nigeria. Because if you look at the dynamics, where we are at the moment, Mali has had its own issues. Burkina has had its own issues, and the list is, is unending. So and we a, still an have some leaders who have changed, uh, uh, who have a, done constitutional a, a military intervention in, in West is Africa. only going to complicate uh, the security situation in the West Africa sub-region. Thank you very much, Dr. Bona. A fine place to go on a break. Uh, we're still discussing the decision by ECOWAS heads of governments yesterday to activate a standby force uh, to reinstate uh, President Bazoum in Niger Republic. We're looking at the security implications of that department, of, of that decision. Uh, when we return, we'll continue our conversation. You stay with us. Thank you for staying with us and Secure the Continent, New Central Television. If you're just joining us, this is Secure the Continent, where we've been discussing the situation in Niger, where the military junta has seized power and is currently holding President Mohamed Bazoum hostage. And the ECOWAS heads of state yesterday uh, did act this, made a decision to activate a standby force to restore uh, democracy to Niger. Uh, we still have with us uh, on this discussion Farhi Raman Rodriguez Kone, Sahel Project Manager at the Institute for Security Studies. He joins us live from Bamako. We also have the pleasure of having Dr. Ada Boda, Security Analyst, who joins us from the Guinean uh, capital, Accra. Thank you very much, gentlemen, uh, for uh, staying with us on this uh, conversation. Now, Farhi Raman, uh, Niger's I did read uh, uh, a web, uh, an opinion uh, piece written by uh, Mohammed Bazoum from Captivity. Uh, he wrote it uh, to the Washington Post, and he did say that, you know, in the two years that he's been president, he's been able to reduce uh, violent extremism by uh, 
the, the level four times uh, to what it used to be before. And it did boast about, you know, bringing uh, relative stability uh, to Niger compared to his neighbours. And that is quite intriguing. Could you explain the key factors that contributed to the stability and uh, their implications for the crisis uh, in the Sahel compared to Burkina Faso, who seems to be the uh, epicenter of the uh, of violent extremism in the Sahel. Yes, yeah, so of course, uh, and that is true. When you look at uh, the the security data, uh, clearly uh, Niger seems to doing well, comparing to his neighboring country, and. Um, um, I think the success is based on its strategy against the terrorists. Uh, and uh, is that uh, this strategy is not only relying on military option, as we've seen in uh, Burkina Faso and uh, in Mali. Uh, the military action, as we have already witnessed, uh, create the opportunity of, you know, engaging more and more combatants and uh, uh, is is limited and uh, this option the, the 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 failure of the french troops in mali uh, uh, especially were linked by the fact by the fact that they only rely on this military uh, strategy but rather in uh, niger the country uh, niger alternates both military pressure and uh, but also uh, refer to negotiation uh, to accelerate the disengagement of combatants from terrorist group, and uh, also using community development action. Uh, there was uh, this uh, DDR process, uh, a call for uh, combatant to disengage from groups through uh, community ties uh, negotiation. And then there was uh, this camp in the DFA region, uh, which permitted to stabilize the front uh, on the Boko Haram side, so, so but just, also so, another. Sorry to interrupt you, uh, uh, Just also, to point also, out, sorry. it's the current military that took over power from President Bazoum that also uh, helped to reduce this violent extremism. So uh, does yes, the yes. excuse to yes. take power from yes. President Bazoum on the grounds of insecurity, does it hold water? And also, I don't think the military is especially trained in handling economic matters. They are also one of the uh, reasons given for the takeover is the downturn in the economy and uh, the downward spiral uh, of insecurity yeah. in Niger. Uh, yes, of course, the, the, the arguing the narrative used by the military when you confront it to the reality in, uh, in uh, Niger, uh, at least on security side, uh, you cannot confirm that security was really as bad as they mentioned. Mm. Uh, but on the economic and social governance, yes, of course, we have to re recall that uh, Niger is one of the poorest country. Uh, even, even though the, uh, the economic, macroeconomic uh, uh, um, figures show that uh, the country was doing very well on macroeconomic side, there was uh, really... Uh, a bad, um, I can say, half of the population is under the the, the level of poverty, mm. and uh, the, the the poverty hits especially the young people, urban young, and uh, the, the also in the rural spaces where the economy is depend only on agriculture. And when you see how climate change is eating the, uh, uh, I can say the uh, the agriculture. So poverty, there is a level of poverty. Yes, militaries are not themselves in charge with economies, and we can also say uh, that they are not uh, really a re in a moral position mm -hmm. to talk about good governance. We know about uh, all the corruption inside the army. Uh, in Niger, we, we can recall this uh, big uh, corruption in the furniture, military furniture. Mm -hmm. Yes, there, there is a but. The, the poorest governance uh, is explaining why uh, uh, this coup occurs. If governance uh, is uh, improved, uh, we could be sure that th this could be stopped. Thank you very much, Fari Rahman uh, Rodrigo Kone.
Uh, back to you, Dr. Bono. Regional cooperation is vital, uh, I mean, to avert a crisis in Niger. Now, how could this crisis in Niger reshape collaboration among West African countries in addressing security and governance challenges? I did read the statement from the Liberian President, George Weir, who did, you know, point fingers at ECOWAS for being silenced when we have uh, constitutional coups uh, where you have leaders sit tight uh, for their third term. And also there's the issue of Chad. Uh, Echo was kept silent uh, when Mahmoud Idris Debi Ibn uh, took over from his father and he was not constitutionally uh, supposed to do so. You also have uh, countries like Guinea, Mali and Burkina Faso uh, opposing the Echo was stance on Niger. So uh, moving forward, how are we going to have regional cooperation and collaboration among West African countries. Hello, Dr. Bona, uh, are you there? Okay, I think we seem to have lost uh, Dr. Bona for a bit. We'll try to reestablish a yeah. uh, connection with him. Dr. Bona, uh, are you there? Yes, I am here. Okay, go ahead. Did you get my question, sir? I think my network started playing. Can you okay, I'll, 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 I'll repeat uh, the question. I said regional cooperation is vital. Now, how could the crisis in Niger reshape collaboration among West African countries in addressing security and governance challenges? I do recall the statement made by uh, President George Weir of Liberia pointing fingers at ECOWAS for being silent when it comes to issues of uh, third termism, sit tight leaders, and people that change uh, term limits to remain in power. Uh, there's also the group of Guinea, Mali, Burkina Faso, uh, who oppose the uh, stance of ECOWAS in uh, suggesting a military invasion of uh, Niger to restore constitutional power. What's your take on this? How can ECOWAS better have collaboration? among its member states in addressing issues of security and governance? Okay, so I have, had, I have, I have been part of uh, meetings that involve, uh, you know, a certain section of ECOWAS. I serve on the Small Arms Commission, uh, you know, in Ghana as a board member. And the Small Arms Wing of ECOWAS Every now and then, we have engagements with, you know, uh, with them. And one of the things I have raised is that ECOWAS seem to be, uh, there, there seems to be two forms of ECOWAS. Mm. One of the, the, the first one has to do with the people. And so if you ask me as a citizen of the ECOWAS block, what do I, what, what, how do I benefit? from ECOWAS. I will tell you that we are supposed to be free movements, free trade, and all that, mm -hmm. but that only exists on paper. And so the only one that is functioning well within the block is the, is the, the club of leaders. Mm -hmm. The club of leaders, they meet and they have their conversation behind closed doors. They do the things they have to do. And if you ask me, well, how do we benefit? I'll tell you, we don't benefit. And so to answer you directly, what I think the ECOWAS block is not doing is bringing the citizens of ECOWAS together. They have very beautiful conventions, beautiful treaties, but that only exists on paper. And so as we speak, it is difficult for me to travel by road from Ghana to Nigeria to probably to Niger or to Mali than to travel from here to, what is the name, uh, any of these European countries, mm. or to even travel by air to any of these countries is difficult. It is one thing our leaders haven't done. As we speak at the moment, they've shut, we've shut the borders when it comes to Niger. A lot of food products like onions and the rest are coming from Niger. They are getting rotten. And so onions, the prices of onions are beginning to go up in Ghana. It means that even though those of us in Ghana and probably neighboring West African countries 
are not in Niger. The economic sanctions in Niger is beginning to bite all of us. And it won't take long. You are going to see uh, probably, I mean, a lot of West Africans don't agree to having an intervention force moving mm -hmm. in. But are the leaders listening? It's a question I've asked. Who are our leaders listening to? As we speak, I don't know whether I'll be ans uh, 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 answering your question directly, but there is supposed to be an ECOWAS parliament. The ECOWAS parliament we have today is an advisory body. It's not an authority. Yes. And so you will have parliamentarians from Ghana and Nigeria and the rest who are selected to go to somewhere they call ECOWAS parliament. When you go to the EU parliament, I want to stand for a member of parliament in ECOWAS. I should be able to stand as a member of parliament in Ghana to represent Ghanaians in the ECOWAS parliament. And so these things, they haven't done well. One of these things have not been done well. It makes it really difficult for our leaders to understand the citizens. Once the leaders don't understand the citizens, the citizens don't understand the leaders. I tell you what, had it not been for this Nigerian conflict or Nigerian issue, how many people actually knew? Ordinarily, you go to the market in, um, in Ghana here, the ordinary market woman, the ordinary trader in Ghana or Lagos or Abuja or in Mali or Burkina Faso knew that President Tinubu was a chairman of ECOWAS. Mm. How many people knew? It means that the people are so distant from ECOWAS. So, like, like, like you said, doing anything. Like you said earlier, Dr. Bona, it's only beneficial to those at the top leadership uh, level of ECOWAS. Uh, it, it seems to be a president's uh, club and it's not beneficial to the ordinary citizens of the West African bloc. Now, Fireman, yes. uh, we've quick run out of time. In less than a minute, what will it take to avert a full bone crisis in Niger? What would you advise uh, the ECOWAS leadership? What steps should they take uh, next? And is there still room for dialogue with the junta in Niamey? Yes, it's, it's, it's important to focus on this issue of dialogue. I, I think what I point uh, at the beginning of, my, of, the, uh, um, of the show is that uh, what are we expecting for Niger? I think the aim, uh, the, the main uh, objective is to have a stable Niger mm -hmm. because a stable Niger is also mean a stable a, a stability uh, for the region. We have already mentioned all the imp economic implication and uh, also the security and possible geostrategic influence of this destabilization, uh, this destabilizing uh, 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 Burkina, uh, Niger. Niger. So, ECOWAS should continue mediation efforts uh, using also leaders, community leaders. We have seen the emir of uh, Sokoto and uh, in the north nigeria playing a role he was the only one who meet the uh, general chiani why mm. ECOWAS, eu and uh, also european uh, uh, american uh, 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 mediators uh, failed so it means that there is opportunity continue if, uh, mediation effort and uh, trying to find you know some solution and uh, how to come to a uh, i can say a, a transition government which take account the interest of uh, both uh, of the protagonists here okay. in play, uh, both Basum or the new uh, military leaders uh, at the power. So the, yes. it's only by this dialogue uh, process. Uh, yes, the dialogue takes time, it's, it's take, it's take time, but at the same time, it's the best way to avoid all the risky uh, uh, instability that should come if there is military intervention. Thank you very much. I would like to say a big thank you to my distinguished guest, Fireman Rodrigo Kone, a Sahel project manager at the Institute for Security Studies, joining live from Bamako, Mali. And also Dr. Adam Bona, security analyst from Accra, Ghana. It was an absolute pleasure speaking with you. Thank you, gentlemen, for your contribution and your insight. Thanks. Now, resolving the conflict between ECOWAS and Niger's junta without armed confrontation requires diplomatic finesse. First, engage in direct and open dialogue to understand the junta's grievances and concerns. 
offer a comprehensive transition plan that includes a return to civilian rule, credible elections and inclusive governance. Facilitate negotiations with international mediators to ensure neutral oversight and also implement targeted economic sanctions and travel restrictions and to leaders while maintaining channels for negotiations. Utilize regional diplomatic pressure to isolate the gender politically urging neighboring countries to enforce the measures. Leverage ECOWAS's economic influence and incentivize cooperation and ensure humanitarian assistance reaches the people. Patience and persistence diplomacy will be essential to guide Niger towards stability and democratic governance. Thank you for watching, but remember to stay safe and alert at all times. I am Binga Borowa. See you next time and secure the continent. Bye-bye.